Hey y'all, I'm Jessie Peterson with Let's Make Art and I like to do art journaling and today's video is an art journal lawn yap. And if you don't know what lawn yap is, um, it's our way of just doing some bonus content for art journaling. At the end of the month here, we've been working on mindful art making and lawn yap is a, it's like a, a South Louisiana word for bonus or um, a little extra. So this is just a little extra video for you to follow along with us. Today we're going to do a quick little tutorial. We'll do a flip through of our journal and what we've made this month. And then I thought it'd be fun to do a little Q and A. And our um, cameraman Keenan is usually off camera, so you hear his voice. But I thought it might be fun to have him say hi because he's going to be reading off the questions to me that I'm going to answer from y'all. I'll shuffle through. <laughs> hi there. <laughs> Thanks, Keenan. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. So we explained Lawn Yop and we were going to do just a little flip through of the things that we've been doing this month. This month was all about mindful art making and um, it's just nice to kind of slow down and do something simple and just be kind of in the moment going with the flow. So we did this layered writing page where we did some writing and then we painted over it and kind of processed what we were feeling or whatever and rephrased that in like one little sentence. I saw lots of really cool um, variations of this in our um, Let's make our Facebook, um, let's make our journal Facebook group. A lot of cool things that everyone was sharing there. We did this Kintsuki um, layout where we tore the paper and then did it back together with the gold. That was a lot of fun. We are gonna work on this today. And we also did this um, sort of gratitude blue burst um, layout where we, we painted this and then we put things that we were grateful for. And then I kind of had fun with the supplies. So, We'll start with this and um, just do a little quick tutorial. I really liked this quote and I thought it went along with the things that we were learning this month. It says, a quiet mind is able to hear intuition over fear. And sometimes I just like having a little formula to, to work off of when I'm making something and I like repetition. So this, this is, we've got a circle on the left, a circle on the right, and then we have it inverted. We have a little, um, of our collage paper on the left and then I painted a little bit on the right. So we'll just have fun doing that. But in order for me to leave room for questions, I'm gonna kind of do a abbreviated version of this little tutorial for you. Okay, so we're gonna start with our blank journal. I'm gonna get my cutting mat that's loved and got lots of stuff on it. Artsy. It here. Yes, it's artsy. Um, oh, and I was gonna say when we were doing our flip through that I also did this little tiny this little tiny guy too. So I cut the tape really tiny and added a little ephemera from um, a box that I received in the mail. So there's lots of variations you can do on this for sure. Okay. Also, that one's adorable. Thanks. It's, everything tiny is just cuter, right? <laughs> like More children. Adorable. Small children, they're my favorite. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. So we can start with this paper that I'm going to have on the left and we'll just trim this up. And what I'm gonna do to make it fit the journal is flip this over, turn it around so you can see it. And I'm just gonna trim it out. Let me just double check that I didn't slip. It didn't slip when I tried to, all right. So I'm gonna put it right there just to the inside of the book so it will go nicely in there. And I'm gonna move it up, there we go, there we go. Flip it. It moved. That's all right. We know it's like that. It's it's roughly there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna take my exacto and just go around the corner because these journals have that nice rounded corner. We could do this with a pair of scissors too. All right. Quick and easy. We got it. So then that should fit real nice. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna get my yes paste out. I'm gonna paste that down. And this is just like a pretty simple, well, I got a lot of yes paste on there, that's all right. We're just gonna take it and spread it out so we get a thin amount of that yes paste on there. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. It's kind of shiny, so they can kind of see where I'm putting it. Very shiny. Good. Like butter on a piece of toast. It is like buttering bread or toast, I like that. No, I want toast. I tend to put a little, a lot of bit of butter on my toes, so. Oh, 100%. Um, you probably don't need that much yes paste. The amount of butter that I would put on toast. You know, you know what I'm saying. And pancakes. Mm. 
I actually like more butter than syrup on my pancakes. So I'm that weird, ratio. I think, because I, I don't like syrup, but I love sugar. So I just put powdered sugar on my pancakes. I don't think that's weird. A okay, lot of people perfect. do that with crepes. Yeah, crepes. We always talk about food. Oh my gosh. It's my goal to now always to talk about some form of food. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We can talk about food when we're hungry. <laughs> we're not hungry. Yeah. Just whenever. Yeah. It's just totally fine. I really do think that you should have some kind of cooking thing where you taste the food and tell people about it. <laughs> that it's good? Mm -hmm. My palate is that of a seven-year-old, so it's not very re uh, refined or... I don't know. It's not a very well educated palate. Okay, so I'm just lining this up like that. I'm going to do it. Another way you could have done this, which probably would have been smarter, actually, is to glue it on and then trim it out. Then you wouldn't have to work so hard at lining it up. Now I have a little glue on my hands, so I'm going to just dip it in my paint water here, get my hands clean, so that I can smooth that out without getting glue on the top of the paper. And, you know, I like my apron to use as paper towel too. Okay, all right. So I'll just smooth that out. Nice. So we got one background already. How quick nice. was that? All right. Then we're going to do a light blue background on the other one. So I've got some paint here in my palette. I'm going to bring this where you can see it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm going to add some white to that and get a nice light blue. Oh yeah, liking that. Do you want to push your journal up a little bit to your left? There you go. Okay, so just using my oval mop brush. This is the half inch one. And I'm just loosely putting it on the hair. Now, if you enjoy having it really even and perfect, you, you do that, that's great. I like things sloppy and fun, so I'm just gonna slap it on here and keep on going. I was actually gonna ask, do you usually try and do any type of pattern on your paper as far as when you're putting the paint down like the brush stroke do you try and get it to look straight and even or do you let it do you throw it on there kind of just feel like my mood sometimes yeah. i'll get really swirly squirrely with it yeah. sometimes i like the idea of it going one direction because that's what i'm doing right now but there's no right or wrong way to do it just however you want to get that paint on there just do that every time i do something that i know i'm going to be able to see my strokes after the fact, I get really nervous that I'm like, wait, am I going to like it? <laughs> I just want to, like, I usually try to put something in between so the next page doesn't get, let me do this real quick. There we go. I'll just put that nice. there so I can paint right to the edge because I like doing that. Okay, and then if you get a little paint on the other side, no big deal, because it's kind of light blue anyway. Okay, so we got that. All right. Let that dry. I'm gonna set this aside for a second while it's drying so we can work on the next step. Let's put that right here. Make sure this is dry for what we're gonna do next. Okay. Um, so we have these two size circles going on in this layout, like this. And I achieved that by just looking for circular objects in my house to trace. <laughs> so I um, had this roll of tape that I did the bigger one on, and I'll just show you how I did that really quick. And then I used the bottom of this glass. But whatever you got around, it's gonna work great. Don't stress about it. All right. And this. It's kind of nice because you can kind of just move it, move it around to frame like what part of the background you want. So I think I like it like that. How's that? Just going to do a pencil circle and I'm going to trim it out. You could do that with scissors. I'm just going to use this exacto because it's right here. I'm not trying to be precious about this. If it's not perfectly circular, no big deal. The general shape of the circle, I'm gonna be happy about it. Ooh. Okay, here we go. I'm getting it. And then once you get it cut out, you might see it like, okay, there's a little bit of a bump on the road here. Let's just take care of that. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Nice. And if thanks. 
If you want to erase some of those pencil lines, you can do that. All right, it's looking good. So that's our background for the left side. Stick that right there for now. I use this cup on a loose piece of paper. Now that I've painted on it, it's all right, we'll do it on the back of this. <laughs> You might want to do this before you get water in your cup, but just for you, I'm going to show you that it's the right size. Just do a little trace. And you might want to try a couple different objects to get that ratio of the big and the small, however you like to do it, and that's just fine. Okay, so no big deal. You'll cut it out and it'll be that size. So you, you might just be walking around your house and be like, all right, this cup's big, this size. What I ended up doing was just taking this cup and putting it in the middle of my tape. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the perfect amount nice. of, of space for that piece to work. So, okay. I won't cut that out because I already got two of these cut already for you. I'm gonna use this back in my journal. will protect my page there. All right. So, I'll show this is dry. The next step is that I did some really loose lettering. I didn't get too crazy with it. I have the quote here. But one thing that I learned from Nicole, and Nicole does hand lettering that I thought was cool, I'm gonna take my paper rack over here, was this, wait, uh, this is just my practice sheet, was that she does, um, oh, I can't remember what she calls it, like the wireframe inside the letter, like the skeleton. Skeleton. Okay, so this is like skeleton power lettering, right? Um, <laughs> so if you ha imagine that you have an A like this, then you can just draw around the A and this is your letter, and then you can kind of erase the middle, and you've got kind of a loose A, and you can kind of change it up however you want. But that's basically how I did these. So A and that one, we could try an M. And she's really great at teaching this, so if you want to learn more about how to do this, you can hop over to one of Nicole's videos. Do you want to shift your head to your right? Yes. So you get that, so you've got your, your actual letter and then you're kind of just doing a little bit around it. Just erase the middle and you've got your letter shape. Now I did that really hard so that you could see it on the camera. If you do it lighter, it'll be easier to erase. And that's just fine. So I did that until I made the quote. The other thing that I did was I kind of just loosely drew like an arch on my circle in order to kind of line up these letters. So I wrote intuition and then I came around it like that. And if you enjoy this process, you can take your time with it and really make it how you want, or you can be loose like I did. It's up to you. Just do it. You enjoy doing it. Okay? So for this one, I painted it blue so that it would con contrast with this background and then this one I painted the background and left the white so I'll just paint this one like this and we'll line it up on our journal and then we'll see how much time we have for our question and answers okay perfect all right I'm gonna use my round eight brush you could probably use a smaller brush if you have one I just find that this one is pretty a pretty good fit for lots of different things so I like using it And I'm just going in and filling in the letter. Will you leave your art there? But yeah, there it is. I got so excited. I was going to, like, my goal was like, don't get your head in the way. This whole <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> we should make a game of it somehow. I know, right? You can get a Snickers if you keep your head out of the video. Mm. Ah. Reward system? Mm. Maybe more art supplies would be... The key to my heart. I feel like we have a lot of art supplies. There's always something else I want. <laughs> I want, yeah, there's a lot of things. It's fine. You got me excited though. I mean, I would take a Snickers. I think you should mention, it's about art supplies and things that you would want. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about how many um, Let's Make Art boxes I have and I need to figure out how to store the things and supplies in them. Mm -hmm. And I thought of your tackle box have you shown anyone, have you shown the, our friends that watch the videos? Have you shown No, them? I have not. You should show that off at some point. It should probably be just like a quick solo video. 
Yeah, I will. I will do that. You should, because be, it's really a good idea. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's just sort of a tackle box that I keep everything in, and I carry it around really easily. Yeah. If you guys let me know that you want to see that, then I will show it. Maybe in the next long yacht video, I could do that. Nice. Mobile Art Center. <laughs> the Mac. These are just, this quote is just like such a good reminder for me. It is difficult to have a quiet mind sometimes, but it is so important. Yeah, we get so busy and with our lists of things and everything that's going on that we forget that we need to make time for that. Like just going outside is like, oh, it's so good for me. And I forget that just that going outside is helpful. Taking a minute to get in my art journal and just make something for me. I think the thing I like about art journaling and just journaling in general is it's just like a way to like, to like process the day, yeah. you know? Like process what's happening instead of everything just coming at you all at once and not like really recognizing it. So that happens a lot to me too. Well, you could really make, take your time with this. I'm just getting, just kind of impatient. I like just to get, <laughs> get it going here. But sometimes I really enjoy these details and I take time. Like when I did the dots on the magic video, I was just like really into those dots. <laughs> Depends on my mood. So just go with it, you know? Okay, so that's just like a quick little, we've got some words for our quote now. Go right there. Okay. I'm gonna let that dry and then I think we have enough time for me to paint this background and then still answer questions, yeah? Yeah. Let's see. One thing I think is good to keep in mind when you're doing um, art journaling, and especially if you're kind of going after this mindful art making that we've been focusing on this month, is to think about uh, the difference between expectation and aspiration. So we'll just talk about that a little bit while I'm painting this. I like to do meditation and I listen to uh, a meditate, like a guided meditation by Joseph Goldstein. He's really awesome. And he talked about this idea of like, we can set goals and that's great. We can set intentions, <clears throat> but there's a lot of things that unfold after we do that, that influence things like the actions that we take you know or whatever that might not might not come out how we imagine and if we are so stuck on the expectation of the outcome um, that it can be kind of kind of take away from the experience that you're having so if we apply that to art journaling for instance we have a goal for a page that we're doing or something we're making and then things don't go like we thought, like we drip some paint on there, <laughs> or I don't know, can, what else bad can go rip wrong a, here? Rip a page on accident? Yeah, rip a page, you know. It could even be a time goal to where you want an art journal every day. Yeah. And then you miss a day. Mm-hmm, kind of like push-ups. I'm well, not saying you missed any days well, for push-ups. Well, I have missed, okay, that's a great <laughs> example though, because I've missed a month. Oh no! I haven't done push-ups for a month, so I'm gonna have to start over building up my strength again to get oh because it kind of messed up your momentum then because mm -hmm. if you stop one day well let's all give ourselves a break it's been a little bit of a crazy month yeah it has for the whole world absolutely but yeah so if you start set an intention and a goal and then life happens and you're stuck on you know what your expectation was then that's kind of a bummer right 
So I think it's important to set that goal and set the intention, but then not to, and um, Joseph Goldstein says this, not to cling to it, to just be in the moment, let those things happen and see where it leads you. And I'm mentioning this because none of the art journaling that I do ever actually turns out for the most part what I have in my head. I just kind of go with that, you know? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I kind of painted the big spots and then I came in the middle in between these letters. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> I said something, but I was concentrating. I immediately forgot what I said and I was like, <laughs> did that? Did I finish my sentence? <laughs> Fill in the big spaces first. Okay. And then go in for the small spaces. Yeah, just going to go up against those little tiny letters. Yeah. That's what I do, but you could do it the other way too, I guess. All right. This is where you're gonna wanna see it, but I'm gonna also have my head in there, so I'm gonna be like real That's uncomfortable true. and try to get it. Is that gonna work? Do you actually wanna shift it to the right a little bit? To the right? There you go. Perfect. Oh, tiny, tiny little spaces. I think that this whole like setting an intention and goals can apply to your life, right? Like you, oh, it's good to do those things, but then. I think the biggest thing, we were talking about this earlier and you said the word distractions. Oh, before we started recording, we were talking about yep. it. Yeah. And uh, that stuck with me because I think when we set a high expectation of ourselves, I think of distractions as coming from within as well as outer distractions. Mm -hmm. So our self-doubt can be a distraction. It can be just an excuse. Oh, yeah. oh, I don't have time. When you really do have time, if you just will organize it. And I know everyone has different lifestyles and different distractions. But for me, a distraction is, oh, I can always do push-ups later. It's not a big deal. <laughs> just take care of it. And then I don't. And that's the biggest distraction for me where I just put it off and put it off. But I think the distraction will destroy our expectation if we don't focus on the smaller steps first. So I'd say set a main goal as per usual and then start with, because you got to do, you can't climb a mountain in one step. You yeah. got to go step by step. Exactly. One thing at a time. Yeah. I, um, I have a lot of anxiety, and that's one of the reasons why I turned to art journaling. And part of my anxiety that I would get caught up in was, like, a whole bunch of future situations. <laughs> like, okay, if this doesn't happen and this doesn't happen and this happens, then that means this. And then, oh, my gosh, the whole world's going to fall apart. Like, my brain just goes there, and then I start freaking out. And what helps me is to be like, okay, what do I have control of right now? Or, you yeah. know, what can I do that can help me feel less anxiety and art journaling helps me stay in the moment helps me stay in today and that is nice but sometimes I get anxiety about art journaling which is silly because that's the thing that I do to try to release relief it and so I have to tell myself like this is just practice we're having fun here it's okay and whatever happens happens you know I think that's a big thing, too. You don't notice your progression when you're in it. Mm -hmm. That's so true. You don't see how far you've come along until you look back to day one. And that's what's cool about our journaling is you have this record that you yep. can look and see as you turn the pages, like this yeah. month, Just last month, last year. Just wait till next year. That's going to be crazy yeah. differences. Yeah. Okay, well, I meant to make this dark like that one, and then I forgot while I was doing this, <laughs> which is okay. It's fine. Looks good. So you could do a dark, dark, dark blue, or you could do it like that. That's all right. I have one last thing to add. Yes. I think we also forget that improvements aren't always visibly shown, but I think they're huge when it comes to internal changes, whether that's knowledge or comfort or peace or, or whatever it is. I think that's a huge thing to recognize as you go along. And that's it. I'm done. I like that a lot. Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. These are just wise, wise things. Okay, so the last step is just to glue this on. So we'll do that real quick. And then we'll get into our questions and answers. Okay, just 
little, little bit of yes paste goes a long way. Now I'm using this jar, this big honkin' jar. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but normally I use it out of this that comes with our box. Actually, I think our first question is about glue. We could do that while I'm gluing this. Yep. So the first question from Susan is, sometimes I have a bigger piece I want to glue into my journal. Will a UHU, which I don't know what that is, but will a UHU stick work or do you always use Yes Paste? Oh, that's such a good question. Okay. Okay. Um, I do use glue sticks. I actually like this, um, this glue stick that's made by Ranger. It's called a diary glue stick. And there are other glue sticks. I haven't used the glue stick that you're referring to, but they are great. And if you prefer that, then you should do it. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it with this right now. Nice. Um, the reason I like Yes Paste and I include it in the box was because it's beginner friendly um, in a lot of ways. And we made it just the amount that you probably wait. Whoops, I'm gonna put that one on this one. That's what happens when I try to do things. It's all right, now okay. you're prepped for the next circle. <laughs> so if this was yes paste, I wouldn't be stressed because it has some time to glue, but I just mm -hmm. used the glue stick, so now I'm like, oh no! So actually, I'm just gonna glue that to this part. There you go. I'm gonna be calm here. And then we'll glue the big guy to the back. See, that's all right, we're good. We're still fine. Nice. So yeah, I good mean, the, the glue stick works similarly. The only difference is you might have less time to work with it and it kind of won't move like it's on there it's not sliding around where the yes paste will slide around so I have a little room for placement and stuff like that so that's why I think it's a little more beginner friendly it might be a little messier hence the me cleaning my hands here <laughs> um, but I kind of prefer the messier over the I can't move it kind of thing but if you prefer glue um, stick no big deal um, I think there was another glue related. Yeah, Terry had one that was related. I've got them in categories okay. for you. There's really only one category. The category is questions, but got them broken into categories. Like Terry that. said, does yes paste expire slash go bad ever? Oh, okay. So that is a great question because um, you can you can run into some, a little, whew, it's a lot of glue, a little trouble with yes paste if you're not careful just like anything else so if I leave my glue little pot that we get here like this open that baby will dry up just like if I leave the cap off my glue stick it's gonna dry up and it will kind of look like this because this I let mine dry up um, it's hard and it's not gonna like reconstitute like much after that um, so a good tip for this to not happen for you is to, um, hold on, have a little um, a wipe. You can use a baby wipe or a cleaning wipe to just kind of clean these edges after you've been working and clean the inside of it really good. Um, that keeps it from getting <laughs> glued shut because I've done that too. And um, keep it closed when you're not working with it. You know, you can leave it open for a little while, but like overnight, you're probably in trouble, you know? Dang. So that will help for the Yes Paste. And it, the other reason I chose the Yes Paste is because it was just a really economical thing to include in the um, box and still allow you to have a good learning curve. Okay, so let's use Yes Paste for the back of this really quick. Oh, another thing I like to use though, because you asked what I else like, is this glue tape by we get this from Tombow? Yep, got it from Tombow. It's on our website. Oh, good. Yeah. Let's make art.com. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so this thing's great. It's just, you flip it back and it has this double stick tape and a roller. And when you press it down, it just puts a line of adhesive on there. So now I've got some yes paste and that on here, but it works just as good. Um, it's a little harder to go straight to the edge with a circle with it, but if you're doing just a straight edge and you just want to get the sides of that glue down, it works really good. So now that I've demoed that, I'm gonna put the rest of the S-Pace on this guy. <laughs> we got all the glue things going here. Oh. All right, so we have finished our page. 
I swear, if you don't have hair on your work somewhere, then you're doing it wrong, because I'm always getting hair everywhere. All right. Okay, my hands are a little sticky, so I'm gonna... There, so that's our page. Nice. And we demoed glue stuff at the same yeah, time. Nice. Now, the other thing that I like to use when I'm um, building up layers and I'm collaging and painting and all that business is a clear gesso. And it's just like our regular gesso, except where it's clear. And I like brushing that over um, things to glue things down. Now, the reason that I didn't just start out with this in a, in a, in a box is because if you're using um, a media that is water soluble, if you wet it with something like this, then it messes it up. So this is really only good for something that we've done with acrylic um, or that's not going to like reactivate with water. Um, so yes face is really great because it doesn't matter where you're working with, it's gonna be fine. Um, this um, takes a little bit of remembering what media you're using and how you're gonna use it kind of thing. But this is um, something we'll, we'll try to have on our website sometime. Nice. So, and I'll, I'll demo that more at another time, but I just wanted to kind of let you know that was, that's coming. What other questions do we have? Okay, we have several. Okay. Uh, I want to save one for last because it's a fun one. Okay. Okay, this one's a good one, and this one's good. Okay, Ashley mm -hmm. would like to know, where do you get your inspiration from? Oh, that's such a good one. Yes. Um, you know, it comes from all over the place, really. Um, for this... Kintsuki one. Whoa, wrong journal. Um, I was actually watching a PBS kids show with my daughters, and one of them mentioned Kintsuki. Now, I was familiar with the idea, but because I was currently thinking about making mindful art, then that idea jumped out because I was like kind of ready for that inspiration. Yeah, you know? that's cool. And so I was like, oh man, that'd be really cool to do like a paper version, and I got like excited. So that's kind of how that happened. Um, sometimes my own journals are inspiration and that sounds crazy but because these are practice pages and we're exploring all these different ideas um, I can go back into my journals and see a media that I was playing with that I kind of got stuck on or an idea that I didn't develop that I'm like you know I'm interested in developing that a little bit more now I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try that out and so you can find inspiration really anywhere um, but I think if I'm already on the on the track of solving something, it's kind of like when you learn a new word and you hear it like everywhere all of a yes. sudden. It's like you're kind of tuned into that. Um, so it's nice to have something you're working on and then the solutions will just kind of come, which I think is really neat and from all over the place. And then, yeah, I think. I like that. Um, one thing, one word of caution when it comes to inspiration that I would definitely say is create before you consume. And that seems kind of crazy but it's like, if you're like, I wanna be artsy, I'm gonna jump on Pinterest and look for ideas. Mm. Then you can just be scrolling for quite a while and then all of a sudden that hour that you set aside to paint is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that will get us into the comparison mode and all of that other stuff. So I always like to just like, just get in there, start doing something. And then if you're looking for a solution and you put it aside, you'll see things, they'll come to you. And I'm not saying don't go get on Pinterest, Pinterest was great. But don't start there. Sometimes that really just like gets us off track, you know? Yeah, totally understand that. So, okay. Okay. This one actually goes along with that question similarly. Oh, okay. It's from Marcy, Marcy Clark, big fan. She has a cool son named Ford. He's, He's awesome. a, we're friends. We have it's the best community. <laughs> so Marcy says, do you usually know what you're going to do in your journal ahead of time? Or do you just sit down and mess around until something works? <laughs> You know, it's a little <laughs> bit of both. Sometimes um, I will have an idea and I'm like, I'm gonna try this out. And something sparked that idea. And sometimes I'm like, I just need to make something, I need to do something and I'll just get paint. Um, but a lot of my work happens in s different sessions. So there'll be days when I'm in the mood to just make a bunch of background paper because I just wanna paint. I don't wanna like be cerebral and think about this big like idea. I just want to get lost in the dots nice. or the brush strokes or just blending color. And so I'll do that. I, and I'll wanna use up the paint on my, um, on my paint tray and I'll just swish some paint on the next page and then I'll come back to it and I'll be like, ooh, you know what that reminds me of? Oh, this could be cool. And so sometimes that happens for me. Cool. And I kind of did that with the supplies in the box. I was like, I just want to, I just feel like painting. So I just did that. 
And now I'm like, ooh, this is kind of a nice space for a quote. And maybe I could do some more drawing and layering on top of this. And that could be really nice. So, you know, you just start with something and then that leads to another thing. Nice. This one's also in secretly in the same category. And I'm just, I'm glad they're all tying into this one. This is all kind of falling it's, around. It's perfect. Good. So this one is from Michelle. And she asks, uh, what do you tend to do when you create something you aren't happy with? Oh, that is also a really great question. Um, sometimes we really can just like hate something like immediately, like oh, I just ruined my journal, worst. Um, but I like to try to give myself some space. I'm like, okay, I'm frustrated. I don't love this. I don't like what happened here. But if I'm immediately gonna like cover it up, then you know that might be rough. And I, I may follow through on that sometimes if I'm really frustrated. I might just like gesso right over it, you know. But I usually try to give myself some space. I'm like, okay, I didn't like that. I might pull out another journal, a different size, and do something completely different. Or I might go organize something at my house. Like, <laughs> whatever you got to do. But then come back to it and look at it with fresh eyes. And you might see that you do like it. Or there is some potential there. Like, okay, kind of like how this site turned out. This one, I don't know. So then you can think about, like, adding another element to like balance out the page or like whatever it is that you don't like about it um so i would say give yourself some space but also gesso is great because it covers right up yep and um yeah i don't tend to rip the pages out because these are thick and it's kind of tough but i mean if you really just didn't like it you could do that um, but i tend to cover it up with more paint and what's cool about that is then you're building up all these cool layers and that might lead to something new too nice nice Okay, uh, let me see here. I want to read that one last because it's, it's a good question. Okay. Uh, but this one is fun because it involves a lot. So, how Linda says, how far in advance does your team start developing the ideas? Because she is in awe uh, of the effort that goes into these kits. What a thoughtful question. I mean, no. I don't know that I would have thought about that, about products that I bought in the past, like, I, at uh, all. No. I'm just I, like, this is awesome. Nope. Keep it coming. I see it. It's there. <laughs> I want it. I get it. I don't it's question sweet. it. <laughs> but, yeah, just for you to be aware of that, yeah, we do work quite a bit ahead. And um, I actually mapped out, like, a year of projects, just, like, a loose idea of, like, okay, this would be really fun to think about. These are things that I learned in school that really helped me. Or I learned this thing in a book and you know when I applied it in my art journal, it really like loosened me up or whatever. So I kind of made a list of those like general things that I wanted to do. And then I thought about supplies that I thought would be fun to try and mix media. And so it was like this puzzle. I don't know if you remember when I was working on a Kenan, I had this big board with all these sticky notes that I moved yep. around to try to like line up this product or mix media with this idea. And some of those things I'm still kind of moving around those sticky notes to line them up um, and some of the products were really easy to source and they like lined up really well and some of them didn't and I had to rework an idea around that so it's kind of been a back and forth sort of be flexible situation and all of the things that are going on in the world right now have made that a little more difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so um, we've had to be even more flexible about that but um, I had this big idea about what it was gonna be like, just like we were talking about earlier. I had this goal and I set an intention for this experience for you. And there's times when that just didn't work out how I thought it was going to. And I've learned, just like I'm trying to teach you in this creative process, that I had to be flexible and let go and stop clinging to like that thing, right? So yeah, it is, we work ahead and we go with the flow. <laughs> yep. We take the punches as they come. <laughs> Did I answer that? Like, that was the whole a good question? answer. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, last question, and it's the fun one. Kay. Well, they're all fun, but I like this one a lot. Have you ever had your hair other colors? <laughs> this is from Jesse. Uh, another she, Jesse. Another yeah, Jesse. <laughs> spelled differently, but still your friends. Okay. And uh, she said, I love your hair coloring. It oh. is spunky and fun. I want to do something similar with green and teal. Thank you. That's so kind of you to say. Um, I have tried other colors. I did like this like sort of ashy bluish gray for a minute. 
um, and it faded really quickly. My mom is, um, her family um, is Irish. My grandma's an O'Brien. Um, and so my hair kind of already tends to shift red and it just turns out that no matter what I do to it, it kind of goes red anyway. So I've just been like, I'm going to embrace it and I'll just do the red because that's what my hair likes to do. So, silly. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all our questions. That's it. We're questioned out for now. Y'all, that was so fun. So fun to answer your questions. So fun to just look back at what we made and, and, and kind of, I don't know, recap the mindful art making. and. Um, I like Lawn Yacht because it gives me a chance to just sort of interact in a different way. And I hope you're enjoying that too. If you have other ideas or other questions, you know, feel free to ask them in our um, Let's Make Art Journaling Facebook group. Um, if you make this page that we did today, you can tag us. Um, let's go make art on Instagram or use the hashtag Let's Make Art Journals. Just however you want to interact with us, we want to see what you're making. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see ya.